from the new game, Devil May Cry, Peak of Combat. We're checking out some of the soundtrack. This is called Fire Inside. It's going to be the full music video. I'm very excited. Let's go. Before we go any further, let's learn a little about the person who wrote the song Fire Inside for Devil May Cry Peak of Combat, and that would be none other than Casey Edwards. Casey Edwards is a composer, producer, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist who has charted internationally. His work span across film, TV, song industry, and of course, video games. Casey has also written two famous songs to the Devil May Cry series, Bury the Light and Devil Trigger. All right, I'm excited to hear Fire Inside. Let's go. Okay. Ooh. All right, what a cool uh, introduction here. It definitely sets a mood very, very quickly. Dynamically speaking, it's huge, right? It's very loud. It's very present. There's no questioning. And immediately we have these like distorted kind of fuzzy uh, synth lines here. Bum, bum, bottom, bum, bum, bottom. Quick establishment of motif. We feel it. Underneath, it feels like, hold on. It almost felt like a far off. It's kind of fuzzy too, like a, like a vibraphone patch kind of a thing going on. But the beginning is obviously, it's super bright. It's very trebly. But in the middle of this introduction, we drop. But what I think that's interesting about this drop, if you look at the rhythmic design and just take away the... If you take away the bum bum bum, the where the melodic stuff is going, look how we focus on the downbeats for the strong points here. Strong points, downbeats, and now underneath that, we start to have this. I don't speak audio engineering, but the fidelity, that fidelity switch with that that engineered rhythm pushing to where we drop in with the guitars and the bass and the drums come in. We then go to a backbeat. A rock bass backbeat right here. Boom, two, four. That's where our focus goes. It's very heavy. Obviously, the extreme sound change with this distortion on the guitars comes in, and it feels more like a rock song. But there are still really big open melodies happening that kind of just kind of go along with the guitar line here. Ba 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 ba. It's big, gorgeous writing. Doom, bra, go, 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 bra, boom, bra, go, go, go. I love how big and beefy that is. We got a pretty wet, saturated hi hat there. It's just like it's that way all the way. Okay, let's go into the verse. Presumably, the verse is coming up, and see where we go. Okay, that's pretty sweet. So the first verse, a lot of fun to listen to. Obviously, the floor kind of caves out and we take away a lot of that big present loud dynamic and it just kind of goes away and we're left with a voice down here and this kind of fry and a groove with the percussion. Oh, and ba, ba, da, one, flat, two, one. That's kind of totally where we're, where we're chilling out. It's nice, so it's a huge variation and it really just kind of pulls the listener attention right in. There's some great lyrical melodic writing going on underneath this pretty, it's like extreme stuff, right? The voice completely changed. We leave the fry alone. And then suddenly it's a lot more scream based. It sounds great though. But then underneath that is these beautiful lines that are just kind of coexisting. This is very cool. Yeah. 
It almost has kind of like, it could be like voice like, it feels almost oboe ish or maybe soprano saxophone. It just has that like, it's cool because it just kind of fused together with sounds that I wouldn't expect to be right there. So I like that quite a bit. Okay. There, oh, wow. Okay, that gave me so many tingles. That's amazing. Okay, the chorus is what you would expect the chorus. We kind of like depart from the beginning composition style, and we kind of arrive to more of a predictable chorus at the moment. Not, I don't mean that in a bad way at all. It just, it's the, the, the progression makes sense, the way the big open long chords make sense, taking up the full length of the bar. And, it, and the voice sounds really good over the top of it. However, we have this one very, very, very deceptive uh, cadence at the end. Oh, my, I still have tingles from it. That's great. Me, sorry, deceptive meaning it resolved to a place that we did not think would normally go there because you're not really set up with the way Western music works and like chord tones and the way our chord progressions, like you're so programmed in your brain. But when that hit, that was like really nice. That's 141. Let's go back to like 130 and we'll let it go out. That, that was definitely fun. <laughs> Cool. So that verse was similar, except on the A side of it. We want to say the a, the verse is an A and a B side. We uh, we had way more percussion stuff going on instead of just with the fry and the low stuff. There was just a lot more added on. So that's some variation. Like as far as like the melodic concepts of it and where we went with the B side of it, it was very very similar. But sorry, I'm still tripping out about that one deceptive chord, man. That that was like enough to make. It's little things like that that just make the listening experience like that much more fun. I like everything else that's going on. It's fun to talk about it, but that was really good. Okay, so I feel like this section, as far as the verse goes, we identified the main difference. Let's go back a couple seconds and keep going here. That was great. Okay, so we got it again, but it was like the breakdown section. The tempo stays the same, but we totally, we've had a, like a lot of like, I guess, um, focus points to rhythm shifts there because now the voice, even though they're not the percussion section, they kind of really become because they're so, mm, bow, bow. 
that's where you're just really sticking it to. The drummer is going off. They're doing all these things underneath. It's very cool. And we still have rhythm being produced from the low end of the rhythm section. But for me, it's kind of, it's really like impossible not to jump up to that top layer. We don't need to go back and listen to that whole section again, even though that, like so far, this is so great, man. I was like, are we going to get it? Are we going to get it? We got way more than the one teaser on the deceptive there. And it just kicked us into that breakdown section. So let's like go back to like 310 just listen to the relationship between like how the rhythm is flowing between voice and the actual rhythm section itself. I didn't even notice the brown, brown. It almost kind of sounds like Doom a little bit there. A little Mick Gordon ish. That's very, very cool. I'll go back to 322. Let's just go back to like right here, kind of catch that again. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Devil May Cry, Peak of Combat. That That's a game you can play for the soundtrack right there. Just with hearing that, that is a lot of fun. I'm so glad all those themes and motifs that were established in the beginning, they made it the whole way through. And uh, for me, the best part is the way they handled that deceptive chord, and then it just inevitably brought us to that breakdown. And uh, that's just that really makes stuff an enjoyable listen for me. But that's just me. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. My name is Drumroll Tony. Catch me when I'm live on Twitch. Link for all the socials down in the video description below. Based on that music alone, the game looks awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Please and thank you. Click the like button. Subscribe to the channel so you can catch the next one. YouTube thinks you should watch one of these two videos next. Have a great day. Take it easy. Bye-bye.